nuclear fission. In short, nuclear fission is the splitting of large unstable nuclei into smaller nuclei. And there's a few things that go along with this process. So let's think about an example. And let's start with, say, some uranium. Now, uranium is a large, or has a large nucleus, an atom of uranium. So if I make these represent the neutrons, I've not nearly drawn enough there, and I have these purple ones as the, the protons. Here is a large uranium nucleus. Now, some of these large, unstable um, nuclei will split by themselves, and we'll call that spontaneous fission. They spontaneously split by themselves. Some of them need to be induced. And usually with uranium, or what we'd find with uranium, which is the type that's or one of the types we'd use in our power stations, is we would need to induce this. And to induce it, we have to make the um, nucleus absorb a neutron. So we can fire a neutron at it. Here's my neutron. So let's add a neutron. And this causes this uranium nucleus become even more unstable and then it splits into two smaller nuclei. So one example for uranium is that it will split into um, barium. and krypton. These are what we would call the daughter nuclei. So um, you can see, imagine this is like the parents and this is the, the daughters, the ones that have come out of it. So let's draw those on. So barium it also has a whole heap of protons in the nucleus. In fact, barium will have about 50, well, we'll have 56 protons, and krypton will have a number of protons. Let's put 36 of them here. Now we should notice that our 56 plus 36 will balance here. Good, that balances. So our proton number remains the same. Let's put in our neutrons. So these are smaller nuclei, fewer protons and fewer neutrons in total. And we could work out how many neutrons are in each of these. If we take the mass number, so barium may have a mass number of 141, take away the 56, that will leave us the number of neutrons there will be. Likewise for krypton, which depending on the isotope may have 92. Um, a mass number 92, take away your 36 for your protons. What's left will tell you how many neutrons there are. Now, you know what? I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger, this one here, just to emphasize that this is a large, unstable one. And we end up with a couple of smaller daughter nuclei. Now, what you will find is, though, if we add up this number and this number, the mass numbers, plus this one, plus this one, we might fall short of a, few, um, of a few neutrons. And actually what goes on in this process is as well as these daughter nuclei being produced, you can end up with two or three extra neutrons being produced. So let's draw one, two. And if we were doing a chemical equation or formula, we'd write it like this. So we've got another neutron and there's two of those. So two more of these being produced. In fact, we don't need the two there. We've drawn it out. So let's look at this process in total then. Large unstable nucleus. Let's have a look at this. Large, we write this down. If you're asked to describe fusion, by the way, this is what they they'll be looking for. A large unstable nucleus absorbs a neutron. So this is our first stage here, what's going on here. So this will be absorbing this. And for a, a brief moment, they will be joined together. Um, it then splits the 
the nucleus splits, that's the key word there for um, fission, splits into two smaller nuclei. Nuclei is just the plural for nucleus. So here's our one, two smaller nuclei. And while this happens, we also get two or three neutrons emitted. Two or three neutrons are emitted. Now it's a little bit random as to how they would split, whether it necessarily be barium and krypton every time, not, not always true. And that means there's sometimes there's two, sometimes there's three or a few neutrons emitted. And what I've not drawn on here on my diagram is also gamma rays are emitted. So plus gamma rays. And then the final thing, and this is why it's of use in a nuclear power station, is that energy is released. So if you're asked to describe fusion, fission, sorry, if you're asked to describe fission, this is what's going on. There's these four lines here. If you can learn those lines and what's going on there, so this idea of a large nucleus absorbs a neutron, splits into two smaller nuclei. Use the word nuclei, use the word nucleus, don't use the word atom. Um, plus two or three neutrons, gamma rays and energy released. Then you'll be getting uh, you'll be getting all the marks on that kind of a question. Now the only thing I've not drawn on my diagram here is this gamma rays, so maybe I can draw on some some waves. Remember gamma rays are high energy electromagnetic waves. That will represent my gamma rays. So that's nuclear fission. Now a note we can add to this is bear in mind to start with we had one neutron caused this one reaction to happen and energy was released, but this reaction released two or three more neutrons. So those two or three more neutrons may go on to um, be absorbed by another um, large unstable nucleus and cause more of these nuclear fission reactions to go on. And what we can end up with is a chain reaction. So if you imagine we had one neutron to start with, joined with one large unstable nucleus, I'm not going to draw it as large this time. And when that split, it gave off one, two, perhaps three more neutrons, which they may join with another large unstable nucleus. Again, I'm not going to draw them super large, just so you get the idea. And if each of those large unstable nuclei, if each of these go on to do perform fission, then they each may release two or three more neutrons. And if there are more of these uranium, for example, nuclei present, then each of those would go on to release more. And it doesn't take long before we have a big what we call chain reaction happening. Remember each of these is releasing a lot of energy. Energy is released each time. Um, now if this isn't controlled, this is the makings of a nuclear bomb. If it is controlled and then this energy release can be used to um, uh, generate electricity. They will boil, use the energy that is released, the heat in the energy, to boil water, generate steam, turn a turbine and you can generate electricity from it. So. This creates, here we can see we've got a, a chain reaction.